Okay, so before you run out screaming and flailing your arms in an attempt to avoid the agony of mathematics, this is all going to be a layman's explanation, so sit tight. So firstly, what you're going to need to understand is what I mean by a pair of diametrically opposite points on a sphere. In general, if you have a point A on a sphere, its diametrically opposite point, B, is found by drawing a line through A and the center to where it intersects on the other side of the sphere. This is also the point on the sphere furthest away from A. For example, the North Pole and South Pole are diametrically opposite. For the rest of this video, this is what I mean when I just say opposite. What if I told you that, right now, there are an infinite number of opposite pairs on the Earth's surface with exactly the same temperature. Bizarre, eh? What's even more baffling, and more difficult to explain, is that right now there must exist at least one opposite pair with exactly the same temperature and exactly the same atmospheric pressure. To get the first result, that is, an opposite pair with just the same temperature, Consider a slice of the Earth going through the Earth's centre. An easy example is to simply consider the equator. This kind of subset of a sphere is called a great circle, as it's a circular section of the sphere which is as large as possible. Now, take a pair of opposite points on this slice. If they're the same temperature, then we've already found an opposite pair with equal temperature. If not, one will be colder than the other. I'm going to put the cold point, point A, on the left, and the hot point, point B, on the right. Now consider the two points moving along the circle while maintaining opposite positions. As the points move around the circle, imagine what would happen if they never shared the same temperature. One thing we can say is that since point A starts out colder than point B, point A can never be hotter than point B, because to overtake B in temperature to become hotter, it would have to, at one point, share its temperature. So, under this assumption that the points never share the same temperature, imagine them moving around a half turn, that is 180 degrees, around the circle. Here's the fun part. Because of our assumption, point A must still be colder than point B. But the current A is the original B, and the current B is the original A. So point A must now be hotter than point B, as the original B was hotter than the original A. What this means is that under our assumption, A is colder than B, and A is hotter than B. This is a contradiction, therefore the assumption is false, and therefore there must be at least one opposite pair with equal temperature. Make sure you understand this explanation before moving on to the next step, as it heavily relies on the ideas here. To show that there must exist an opposite pair with the same temperature and the same pressure, we must consider that in the previous argument, a and B were moving along a circular path, and liberate ourselves from this unnecessary restriction. The only thing special about the great circle is that it gives us an easy to visualize example of a set of connected opposite pairs on the sphere. So simply consider point A taking any path along the sphere to point B, and point B following A in the sense that it always takes the opposite point on the sphere. Once again, as A moves to B, it goes from being colder than B to hotter than B, and so at some point along A's path, it was of equal temperature to B. This is very important. It means that 
every path from A to B contains a point which has equal temperature to its opposite. Now consider the set of all the opposite pairs on the sphere with equal temperature. Note that these points don't have to have the same temperature as all the other points. They only need to have the same temperature as their opposite to be in this set, this very exclusive club of points that satisfy our condition. Think about a possible example of one of these sets of points. What may come to mind is a bunch of dots scattered over the sphere, but this is not possible. As long as these points are disconnected, we can always find a path from A to B which does not contain any of these points. But as has been shown, it must contain a pair of these opposite points. From this, we can conclude that our exclusive club of points must contain an unbroken line dividing the sphere in two sections, with A in one section and B in the other. There could be points in our set which are not a part of this dividing line, but they don't matter to us. We're kicking them out of the club now. This club, or mathematically speaking, this set, is beautiful. It's an unbroken line around the sphere of pairs of points which are both opposite and of equal temperature, which must exist for any sphere with temperature, like the Earth's surface. How to find the pair with also equal pressure? Simple. Choose any pair of opposite points in this set. If they have equal pressure, we're done. If not, let A be the point with lower pressure, and B be the point with higher pressure. Our unbroken line gives us a path from our new A to our new B, and for exactly the same reasons that we've been using, there must exist a pair with equal pressure. And we're done! This opposite pair is part of the exclusive club, and so it has equal temperature and equal pressure. The term circle technically refers to the circumference of what is technically known as a disk, and is sometimes called a one-sphere, as it is really a one-dimensional object which curves around in two dimensions. Similarly, the term sphere technically refers to the surface of what is technically known as a ball, and is sometimes called a two-sphere as it is really a two-dimensional object which curves around into three dimensions. A three-sphere would be a three-dimensional object curved around in four dimensions, and is mathematically sound, but unfortunately impossible for us to visualize. The first and second arguments I presented in this video were intuitive explanations of the one-sphere and two-sphere special cases of the borsuk ulam theorem, but the theorem is generalized to any arbitrary n number of dimensions, and is of course mathematical as opposed to intuitive. A concise description of the theorem is that it proves if n functions, like temperature, pressure, humidity, etc., are defined over an n sphere, then there is at least one pair of diametrically opposite points on the sphere for which every one of the n functions hold equal values in the two points.